in this English lesson to help you improve your English, I want to teach you four phrases that native English speakers say all the time, and all of them have something to do with the word mind. Yeah, I'm getting my car washed right now, and for some reason, we have completely stopped. Oh no, am I gonna be trapped in here forever? Oh, here we go, we're moving. The four phrases are, do you mind, pay no mind, keep in mind, and in the back of my mind. The first thing we should probably talk about is that word mind. It's almost like brain, but the brain is the physical thing you can see, probably a little gross, but the mind is what you think with, it's how you feel. So brain and mind are very close. In fact, they're almost the same. Ooh, the sun is bright today. So most of these phrases will have something to do with the way you feel, but not all of them. The first one, do you mind or do you mind? It can be really rude or really polite. Let's say you're standing in line at the movies. The Brits might say you're in a queue, but let's say you're standing in line at the movies waiting to go inside and then someone cuts in front of you. Like they weren't even waiting there and then they just step in front of you. You might say to that person, uh, do you mind? And it helps if you add that little, uh, 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 do you mind? Meaning like, what's your problem? Why are you doing this? Last night in bed, you may know my wife, her name is Jamie, and I accidentally kicked her in my sleep. I promise, I didn't even know what I was doing and I kicked her right in the leg. And she rolled over, phrasal verb there, she rolled over in bed and asked me, uh, do you mind? I didn't even know what I was doing. I was sleeping. So of course, I apologized. But do you mind can also be very polite. Let's say you're having dinner at the table and the salt and pepper are in the middle of the table. You may ask your friend, hey, do you mind passing me the salt? Do you mind passing me the pepper? Do you mind? Can be really rude or really polite. Number two, pay no mind. It's another way to tell someone to ignore something. Let's say you moved into a new house and you wanna have guests over to show them your new house, but maybe you forgot to do the dishes. So. When they come in your house, you might say, hey, pay no mind to those dirty dishes. I'll get them later, but I really wanna show you my new house. Maybe you're in English class and you just wrote a paper and you want your friend to look it over. More phrasal verbs. You want them to read it, to check for any mistakes, but maybe you know there are some spelling mistakes and you'll fix those later. You might say to them, hey, could you look over my paper? Pay no mind to the spelling mistakes. I will fix them later. I'm at a baseball field and they have a bathroom. Does anybody need a bathroom? We call it a porter potty. I think I'll pass. They're always pretty gross. You may also hear pay no attention. Pay no mind and pay no attention are basically the same thing. There's a famous movie in the United States, I don't know, you may have seen it, called The Wizard of Oz. And at the end of The Wizard of Oz, there's a man behind a curtain pretending to be the actual Wizard of Oz. And he tells Dorothy and her friends, pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. Oh, pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. I think to explain number three, I'm gonna go sit in a dugout. Number three is the back of your mind. We never talk about the front of your mind, I don't know why, but in the back of your mind, it's when you're thinking about something, it's not your first thought, but you just kinda have it brewing in your mind. It's there, you're not really thinking about it, but you're not forgetting about it. Okay, story time. This one is complicated in the back of my mind. Let's say you knew of a guy. You didn't know this guy really well. We'll call him Joey. He wasn't a friend, 
he was an acquaintance. You would see him from time to time. You might bump into him at the store, you might say hello, and then you'll move on. Ooh, a lot of phrasal verbs there. But you didn't really know him. And then one day, you find out he robbed a bank. You could say, in the back of my mind, there was something about that guy I just didn't like. So you never actually said it to him, you never actually said it to anybody else, but you always had that thought in the back of your mind. I was distracted by a bird that was fluttering around on the ground. He's gone now. Fluttering, it means he was jumping around. I didn't get to catch him on camera though. It's so comfortable in here, I might just stay here for number four, but before we get to number four, could you hit that like button? It really helps other people find the channel and also learn some English. And this shirt, I wanna thank Miho for sending me this shirt from Japan. Thank you so much, Miho. Number four is keep in mind. It's another way native speakers will say, remember something. Let's say you're in English class and the teacher says, hey, keep in mind, you need to turn in your assignment on Friday. So remember, don't forget, pass in your assignment on Friday. Turn in your assignment on Friday. The three phrasal verbs, they mean the same thing hand in, pass in, turn in. It's when something is due and you need to give it to the teacher. Or maybe you just hit that send button on the computer and you turn in that assignment digitally. Keep in mind, this might be an English lesson for advanced learners because I used a lot of vocabulary that might be new and some tricky phrasal verbs. You may need to watch it again. Take some notes. If you like this lesson, take a look at this lesson I did about talking about bad luck in English. Thanks so much for watching. See ya.